Hi, and welcome to our webinar today from Message Media about tips for emergency communications. Emergency communications is something that's going to be really impactful to everybody at this time. And we wanted to share our tips and the resources that we've made available to you, and as, as well as inviting everybody on the line to ask questions and to um, seek advice from our team. We've got three people on the line with us that can help you out today. Those are our CEO, Paul Perrett, who'll give a brief statement on Message Media's response, Ronnie Howard, who works on customer experience for us, and Luke Grimstrup, who is one of our senior product managers. So at, if you do have questions, please drop them into the questions box on the side panel, and we will come to them at the end of the session. In the meantime, I'll hand over to Paul to explain uh, Message Media's response. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, we're obviously experiencing what is an unprecedented um, public health situation uh, with COVID-19. Um, it's, a, it's a very dynamic situation, uh, which I think we're all uh, struggling to, or you know, working, working to um, understand the implications uh, for our families, first of all, um, as many of us are, um, and also for our businesses. Um, in that context, I guess, you know, we wanted to um, uh, really focus on what we can do um, at two levels. Um, the first of all is making sure um, that the safety and well-being of our staff um, is, is utmost in our minds. Um, and of course, you know, like all of you are doing, uh, we are you know, thinking very carefully um, and putting um, as many measures as we can in place um, to ensure that. Our second thing um, that we're really focused on is ensuring um, that we are geared up um, to support you during what is undoubtedly going to be a period of um, um, challenge for your, your, your business or your organisation. Those challenges are going to vary dramatically by business um, and by organisation. Um, and you know, I think one of the things that we're already realising is that it's going to pose many new um, and unforeseen situations um, and unforeseen things that you are looking to do. Um, so the, you know, the, our, our mindset as we think about what we can do is being really tuned in to ensuring that we are there, standing beside you, helping you, whether you need to communicate with your, your members, your customers, your staff, or, or whatever it is. So that's a, that's a fundamental principle that we're very much focused on. We're very fortunate um, as a global software business, as a globalist software business, um, that by nature of our service um, you know, being provided in the cloud, and by nature of our, our workforce um, being kind of IT focused, um, that we're exceptionally well set up to operate remotely and, and to operate from home. Um, that's working remotely and working from home is something we're very familiar with. Um, and you know, we have absolute confidence that we can continue to provide um, the service, um, our service, um, but more importantly, um, that we can provide the, the, the support um, and, the, um, and the access to kind of resources, material, and most importantly, our experts um, who are very well versed in um, helping customers do things quickly. As part of that, um, you will have seen that we're working to create a set of tailored resources. Um, we're obviously um, dealing with an evolving situation and these resources will grow. And I guess what, I'm, what I would really ask from all of you uh, is for you to be sharing with us questions and things we can do to help. And we will build out um, our resources that make it easier, quicker and more efficient for you to do the things you need to do. Um, so please, um, Please make sure that if there's something that is not there that you think you need or you need support on or you want to understand what other organisations are doing, please just let us know, let the team know um, and we'll provide that. So with that, I will hand over to, back to Rachel. Okay. So now we're going to hand over to our customer experience manager who will be able to talk through the tools and resources that we have built to date. And at this point, I'll hand over to Ronnie Howard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so as Rachel pointed out at the start of uh, this webinar, today is about providing uh, information to help you guys prepare for sending messages. Uh, now, obviously, a lot of people are already au fait with sending messages to the platform. However, this whole situation around coronavirus means that a lot of businesses are now sending messages that are outside the scope of their normal use cases. So what we want to do is make sure that you've got everything that you need to think ahead and to be able to prepare yourselves um, to send communications quickly, efficiently and effectively and to be able to deal with the downwards flow as well 
uh, be that workflow management, replies, et cetera, et cetera. So we've put together <coughs> a bit of a checklist to help with that. And this checklist is somewhat universal. Uh, we've seen businesses sending uh, messages across a, a wide range of industries from health, education, finance, uh, government, event management, small businesses, you name it. We, we've seen them go through all around the same theme of, of preparing for coronavirus. Um, the typical themes are anything from appointment instructions, sending hygiene tips, uh, sending company statements, schools sending comms to parents, et cetera, et cetera. So this list is, is designed <coughs> excuse me, to be able to um, help anyone in any situation prepare to send messages, no matter what industry or what scenario they're facing. Um, so we'll run through them um, and uh, hopefully by the end you'll sort of feel a bit more uh, prepared uh, to move forward. So the first step is, is one of the most important and that is data preparation. This is making sure that you've got the correct contact, contact information for your recipient base. Um, <clears throat> now whether this is uh, internal staff, whether you're um, an education facility contacting parents, uh, whether you're a, a general practitioner contacting patients, it's essential to make sure that your data is correct and accurate and that phone numbers are stored in the correct format. Um, so international uh, format is uh, recommended into the platform. That's including the dial code. Um, and in order to make sure that your contact list is accurate, uh, we recommend sending a test broadcast. Now we actually did this ourselves at Message Media um, last week. We had to make sure that the contact details on hand for all 250 employees across uh, Australia, New Zealand, UK, US were correct. And uh, we sent a test broadcast out to everyone asking for a reply back uh, with their name. And then using the data export functions that live within the, the Message Media web portal, uh, we could pull exports to compare what was sent versus what was received and to then to follow up those that hadn't responded to make sure that we actually have the correct information for them. It's a very effective way of, uh, of making sure your data is accurate. Vital part of the checklist, so if you haven't already sort of taken measures to audit your list, we strongly recommend doing that first. Um, <clears throat> the next step is organising your contacts and that means uh, making sure that you've thought ahead to how you're going to be communicating with your wider audience. For example, if you're sending to various groups in different states or in different divisions and the message needs to be tailored specifically. So for example, if you're sending into state and you're wanting to include links to um, you know, state government uh, health, health websites, for example, um, or contact details for state-based offices, um, then it's important that you've actually set up contact lists uh, with state-based contacts in those contact lists so you're not having to send one message out to everyone you can actually tailor those messages to each group so give a bit of thought to how you want to manage those contacts and make sure you've got your contact lists set up accordingly then think about the actual audience themselves and their needs so this is looking more about the actual texture of the message um, who you're sending to what it is you're wanting to communicate on um, and as i mentioned before you know state-based links or, or, or segment specific information that goes into that message and making sure that you've got that information uh, to hand and it's correct. So <clears throat> if you're based in, um, for example, if you're based in Melbourne and you're not overly familiar with um, you know, what happens in different states around uh, government links, et cetera, et cetera, um, do a bit of research, make sure you've got that information up, up front. Also consider your uh, local language and dialects, especially if you're sending uh, overseas. Um, so Message Media has the Google Translate function available in uh, the message content creator. Um, so utilizing that is a great way of making sure that whoever is receiving your message is getting it in the most appropriate language for them uh, so that your, your important message is received and the information is assimilated. We then talk about optimizing your account. Um, now this is about making sure that your account is set up with the correct features to make sure that you can actually do the job that you want to do. Uh, what I mean by that is, for example, if you're thinking about sending, for example, links, we've talked about links a few times so far, um, you might want to use a URL shortener uh, to reduce what could be quite a lengthy link down to 22 characters, uh, keeps your message looking nice, saves your character count. Uh, you might want to look at uh, the ability of sending pictures, MMS, uh, perhaps mobile landing pages. Uh, you might want to have an automated workflow to invite people to respond and, and you can send out automations, uh, automated messages uh, to provide further information. All of these things would require um, some additional feature setup if you don't already have it. So have a think about 
what you need to do and make sure that you've got those features ready to go in your platform um, before you need to send your message. Last thing you want is to find yourself in a position where you need to get comms out urgently and you don't have the facilities yet prepared in your um, web portal to be able to do that. Um, and again, we're on hand. Uh, we'll give some information out at the end of this webinar about contacts to help you get that stuff set up if needs be. <clears throat> the next is about preparing your team. Um, this is about thinking who is going to be sending messages. It may be in the past that maybe one or two people have been managing uh, the sending of, of communications from your organization, but in the scenario that we find ourselves in now, you may want to open that up to other people to be able to send messages, uh, whether it's teachers sending messages to their students or their parents, um, or doctors sending to their own patients or things like that. Um, think about who needs to have access to the platform. Um, it might be that uh, you want somebody to be able to send messages but not have access to the platform, in which case you might need to set up email to SMS so uh, these remote operators can still send messages via the platform without having to have an account. Um, there's a whole section in our help portal uh, that explains how to set up sub accounts, how to invite users to allow multiple people to send messages under your parent account uh, by having their own logins and you can still see what's going on and what people are sending. So. Again, as much consideration given to the external audience um, as you do to the people within your organization who are using the platform. Um, the next step um, is about writing your messages. So again, we, we strongly recommend if you haven't already preparing your message content prior to needing to send it. Um, we've got a, a list of, um, of top tips for um, message content, uh, which sits on our support site. And uh, that's built around some key principles, one of which is, you know, identify yourself clearly. Make sure that you know exactly, uh, you know, your, your recipients know exactly who you are uh, when you're communicating with them. It's also going to help your message to cut through um, a lot of spam messages that may be flying around at the moment. Um, so people know um, who it is that's messaging them. You may also want to build templates for consistency. I mentioned earlier about having multiple people using the platform uh, to be able to send messages. Having templates ready to go means that there's consistency no matter who is sending those messages, um, protects against language variances, grammar variances, spelling errors, um, and obviously keeping your message on point as well. Uh, planning for personalization. So do you want to address your recipients by their first name? Uh, we've been working with, uh, with some uh, not-for-profit organizations around um, sending appointment reminders. Um, and special instructions around appointments regarding uh, people feeling ill or if they've got concerns. And in those reminders, we're, we're addressing the, the sender by name, uh, they're putting in the appointment dates, the appointment time, who their appointment is with, and that is going to vary across a, a wide range of recipients. So consider how you want to, to address your customers and what information you want to give them, um, and then build out your data templates. So your contact list, make sure you've got the additional data within those contact lists um, so that you can build out the personalization in your message by using field references. Um, and also consider your message length. Um, <clears throat> as you may know, the character length for a standard SMS is 160 characters. That's not including any special characters such as emojis uh, or language specific symbols. Um, if you're sending to 30 people and your message accidentally spills over into two messages, costing two credits as opposed to one per recipient, not such a big deal. If you're sending 100,000 messages, then that can become quite an issue and you might get a bit of bill shock. So it's important to make sure that you're keeping that character count in mind. And this is where things like a URL shortener really comes into play. If you are sending a link out, then a lengthy link can consume your character count within your message. So using a shortener is a great way of rationing that character count and making sure that you can put as much information in there as possible without blowing out your credit cost per broadcast. We then talk about planning the next steps. I, I hinted at this earlier. So what exactly is your end-to-end -end strategy? What is the end-to-end -end journey of the message? Is it just a one-time broadcast? Here's some information. Thank you very much. Or are you inviting people to respond back based on their responses? Do you want to then funnel those recipients into special groups that you can send specialist communications to? Uh, for example, asking um, parents from a school, have, has your child traveled within the last 14 days, 28 days? If so, please reply yes, and then putting those recipients into a special group that you can then send very specialized communications about what they're supposed to do in relation to school attendance. Um, 
So it's a very uh, important part of the message of the strategy is to make sure that you've you've got these these flows worked out and you know exactly what uh, what you want to do with them. Uh, responses being forwarded to an email or mobile phone. Do you need multiple people in your organisation to be across the re uh, the receipt? Uh, excuse me, the replies coming back in, um, so that people can take action accordingly without having to be logged into the portal and viewing the inbox. Um, so there are a, a wide range of things that you can do with the platform to help manage that onward journey, um, but it's best to have these things planned out ahead of time. Um, a key part of this, and we've seen multiple uh, customers come through to us asking us to help with this, which is making sure that their account uh, is actually ready to send in terms of the credit balance is correct for uh, prepaid customers. Um, making sure that the credit limit um, is actually sufficient to accommodate this increased number of messages that are being sent. Um, if your credit limit does need to be extended, then obviously contact us and we can sort that out for you. Uh, but it can be a nasty surprise if you send out a large emergency broadcast and find out that a number of your messages didn't get delivered because you've hit your limit um, or you've run out of credit and you've got to then go through that process to, to top up and resend. Um, <clears throat> so preparing that sort of stuff first is, is critical. Um, if you're not sure um, about managing credit limits, it is possible to switch to a higher limit plan. You can move on to a post-paid post -paid plan if you're a current prepaid customer, um, or if you're already on a plan um, and you're not sure what you're gonna need, then you can move up to a higher a plan and then just move back again once you've sent your messages. So uh, we do allow for sort of periodic movements between different plans uh, for this exact reason. So give that some thought, and if you're not sure, contact our support team and we'll happily work with you and talk through it. Um, testing is also very important. So uh, especially if you've, sent, if you've set up any automated flows, um, automated responses, for example, or as I said before, moving recipients into specialized contact groups. So you might wanna set up um, a bunch of numbers uh, within your organization that you can send a test to by using the send test function, uh, which is available um, a standard feature in the web portal um, and this will just mean that you will be able to make sure that your end-to-end -end flow is working correctly before potentially going out to tens if not hundreds of thousands of people uh, worst thing would be to, to send out an expensive message and then have the flows not working and having to redo it so it's very important to make sure that your testing is, is considered as part of the process um, when we come to actually sending the message, um, this links back into considering your audience and making sure your contacts are organized um, and the end-to-end -end flow. Um, if you're inviting recipients uh, to respond and you want to be able to send responses out in real time, for example, or monitor responses via an inbox, it might be worth staggering your send if you're sending to large audiences. That means that you're not gonna potentially get thousands of responses flooding your inbox that are too many to keep on top of. You can, you can batch the send and, and stagger it over time so that those replies will drip feed in and be a lot easier to manage. You might also want to uh, schedule your messages for different time zones. Uh, we have a function called socially aware sending um, on the web portal. Um, that is based on the location of the account, not the location of the sender. So if you know that you're sending internationally, perhaps if you're sending to Perth and your message is due to go out at 9 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, you might want to schedule the Perth send a couple of hours later so that it's uh, not at an unsocial hour when the message is received. And the same would go for international. Um, likewise, if you want to get your messages prepared early and have them scheduled to send at later dates, that's something that you might want to do as well, just to stay on top of this um, so that uh, you can pretty much set and forget in that case. Um, and the final step is about tracking the engagement. So it's important to know that your messages have been sent um, and where you can, <coughs> you can um, obviously track the receipts as well. Just in the example that we used earlier about confirming data, um, you know, be across the functions available within the web portal, um, understand how the reporting works, um, understand how to actually view uh, delivery status reports, et cetera, so you can see uh, which messages are and are not being delivered. Um, so you can jump on those as quickly as possible. Um, in our support uh, pack, which or our support repository rather, which we'll get to uh, shortly, uh, there are instructions on how to actually do this, how to pull reports, how to check sends versus receipts, and, and the use case of uh, checking information with recipients as we did uh, last week. 
And the final part of this is really about giving thought to your message structure as well. It's we, we obviously see a lot of different messages flow through, flow through the system, um, but there's one sort of common uh, common methodology that applies to all messages. And we've just broken it down here um, just to give a very clear indication. So as you can see, number one, um, hi, John, it's a very personalized uh, greeting. So where you can be personal, obviously it's not always possible, but if possible, uh, be personal in your greeting. Um, number two is the actual message content. Um, we just say be clear, be concise, uh, you know, ration your wording, don't use five words when one will do. Um, and, you know, especially at times like this, we're dealing with a, you know, a, an emergency situation. People are, are, are concerned, they want information. So, um, you know, we say get to the point and just get the information through as, as cleanly as possible in your message. Number three, you'll see that's an example of a URL shortener at work. Um, so on the right hand side, that's how that message appears on a phone. Um, and you'll see that that URL is limited. Um, so it doesn't take up the whole message. Um, and then number four, you'll see that the contact number. So we've put that in a format. You'll see that that comes through as a, a link that can be tapped on the message. Um, so if you are giving out contact information, make sure that you've got those numbers in a format that can be tapped and dialed direct from the message especially important if you're sending messages internationally and you need to include international dial codes, state-based dial codes, if it's a landline versus a short code versus a mobile number, just make sure that that number is uh, in the correct format. Send a test to yourself and, and make sure it works before sending out. And then number five is just to sign off where you've clearly identified who you are. Um, there is something in the web portal called a default message template, which essentially you can use as your signature, and that will apply to every single message that you uh, that you send. Um, and you can edit that as you're writing your message, but if you set that up first, it means you don't have to worry about um, always writing your signature into your messages. Um, but do make sure you've got your identification clearly clearly present in your message so people know who you are. And as I mentioned before, we've put together a, a, a coronavirus specific resource hub, um, which is available on our uh, website. Uh, the support site is support.messagemedia.com. And when you're on there, you'll see quite clearly there's a category uh, COVID-19 coronavirus uh, resources hub. Um, and in there, you'll see an expanded version of this checklist, uh, which includes links to additional support documents that show you how to use various features um, and, and functions, uh, links to contact us if you if you need to contact us uh, to get anything set up or for additional support, um, and also uh, other uh, useful uh, tips and hints as well about message structure and, and what have you. Um, we've also set up a text in uh, support line as well. Uh, so if you text the word support uh, to uh, 61436 278 682, you'll receive a response that gives you four options um, and responding against either of those options uh, will uh, result in additional information being sent to you. Um, it's also a really good example of how automations work. So we recommend that you give this a shot and, and text that number in and, and see what we have to offer, but also get a feel for what you can do with your messages as well through using uh, automated responses and, and what have you. So, Again, it's plus six one four three six two seven eight six eight two, and just text the word support. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's that's our sort of recommended a recommended checklist for sending messages. Uh, it doesn't have to apply to an emergency situation. It's good practice to get into for any broadcast. Um, and as I said, it applies to a wide range of scenarios as well. We have also created a bunch of templates as well. If you if you have a look in that resources hub, you'll see some templates which are tailored to uh, specific use cases. For example, uh, you know health organisations contacting their uh, patients about appointment times, or schools contacting parents about closures. We we had a situation uh, earlier in the week of a school needed to set up messaging to send to parents because uh, their parents were pulling kids out of school. Um, earlier ahead of any further notification. So the school wanted to send out uh, a blanket broadcast just outlining their policy, what they're doing about it. They realized that parents were getting nervous, so um, they, they put out a broadcast just, just giving a bit of peace of mind about what the process is going to be and, and the timelines, etc. So um, those templates have, have been built around the experience that we've had, not only over the years, but also in, in recent weeks as to how we've been working with our customers. So if you do need a bit of guidance, feel free to jump in there and, um, and have a look at those templates and see if they're any use to you. Um, but that's it for me. I'm going to hand back to Rachel. Thank you.
Great, thanks very much for that, Ronnie. So at this point in time, we are opening up for questions and we've already received a fair few that have come through the channel as well as we've received, as well as some we've received through email. So the first question I'll put out there was one we got from Tanya, which was asking if there is a mobile app that we, um, we can provide for customers. And at this point, I'll hand over to Luke Grimstrup, our Senior Product Manager. Yeah, fantastic question. Um, so at the moment, there is no mobile app for message media. Um, you can access the web portal uh, on your mobile device and it is responsive. So you know, Windows will, will shrink down and you can still uh, use it in, in Chrome or, or whatever uh, mobile browser you're using uh, to, to send messages out to uh, contact lists, what have you. Um, an alternative as well is to use something like email to SMS. Again, where if you've configured all of your groups within the within the web portal, um, you can give each contact group a, a special email address, uh, and then you just email that email address at e2s.messagemedia.com, and that will send out a, a SMS from there. Thanks, Lou. We've also had another question relating to how we actually are going to be able to continue business continuity as a business. And it's a question for Paul. How secure is the business to keep going if the office for some reason gets shut down? Yeah, no, thanks, Rach. Um, as I kind of mentioned at the start, we're, you know, we're, we're very fortunate um, in that as a, as a technology business, um, we are well accustomed to using working remotely. Um, we multiple offices and we you know, um, um, regularly have staff working from home. So that's a, quite a usual scenario for us. Um, of course, having everyone working from home um, is um, is a step beyond that. Um, but we're, uh, you know, but we're, we're pretty comfortable that that's, you know, that's, you know, we're going to be able to operate as normal. And today we've, uh, we're actually all working from home. Um, so we're, we're undergoing a work from home day um, and just making doubly sure that, um, that our, you know, that our phone lines still work, that there's no unexpected access issues, that staff are able to, um, you know, work effectively in a home environment. So, um, you know, and I know many organisations are doing a similar thing, but I think that's a really prudent step to take. Because um, I guess our view is that it is inevitable we will be working from home. Um, and so we're working on, you know, the, lo you know, the logistics of that, uh, the infrastructure individuals need, uh, but also making sure that um, we work out the right work patterns and processes, you know, whether it's, um, daily video chats, you know, wh wh whatever it is for each team um, to ensure that as a business we can keep, keep delivering for our customers. Fantastic. And in fact, this webinar is actually being run in for. Hillary, do you need to have consent to send SMS if it, this is for an emergency and not marketing? And recognise we do have uh, people from all over the world on this particular call. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. So um, I would say that if you're unsure, the first thing to do is probably check your local le local legislation on that. Um, it will vary uh, across different different countries um, and quite possibly different states. Um, typically, um, what we say is you should always include an opt out option in your messages. Um, and you can do that at the click of a button in the web portal or just add it to your signature. Um, so as long as you are managing those opt-outs effectively, then um, to send an emergency message that's unsolicited, um, you you should be okay. But we always recommend checking your local legislation before doing so if you're unsure. Fantastic. <clears throat> the other one that has come through is: Are there specific templates for schools or education facilities? Yeah, and the short answer to that is yes. Um, in the uh, support, uh, the resource uh, hub that we've put together, um, as I mentioned earlier, so we have built out some templates already, and we're going to keep adding to them um, as needs arise. So um, we invite anyone who uh, has a specific scenario that you need help with the wording, let us know. Um, and if we can help create templates and, and share them with the world, then obviously we will do. Um, but yes, if you go in there, you'll see um, a, a a template set specifically for education um, and hopefully they'll be of use to you. Fantastic. We've had another one from Hillary asking if I use SMS through any from through another software, can I still log onto the website to send those templates? And Ronnie, that's uh, sorry, that will be for you, Luke. 
Yeah, so if you are using um, an integration that's sending SMS, you can still uh, log into the web portal uh, and configure templates, uh, your own contacts. And it shouldn't have any impact to, to existing integrations. This is the uh, this is the perfect example where you know really encourage you just to pick up the phone and give our guys a call. Um, you know all of these situations are going to be slightly different, and um, they're well used to kind of I guess working with you know um, people to kind of figure out the, the most effective way to do that. So that's the that's the perfect scenario um, where I just really encourage you to kind of pick up the phone and give us a call or, or, or drop us a note. Yeah. And our resource portal is not um, is not hidden behind any firewalls or anything like that. is available to the entire public. So all the templates that Ronnie has and um, examples that Ronnie has talked to today is publicly accessible for everyone. Now we actually are have hit time on this one today. Thank you very much for coming and listening to us today. We will be sending out an email with links to the resources hub over the next couple of days as well as a link to um, listen to this webinar again, if you wanted to share it on. So thank you very much. We hope everyone stays safe, um, wherever it is and whatever situation you are, finding yourself in in this situation. And we will continue to build out more and more content um, as we find more things coming through. So thank you very much for attending and um, best of luck for today. Bye.